Brief weekly news. Um, Emma's been out in two of our cars. She took the Peewee up to Norfolk and back the other day and said that was lovely. Complained of a rattle, but that was just the washer pump that I'd left out of the washer bottle so it doesn't all get mucked up whilst it's in storage. Uh, so that's fine. And then we've taken the American 142 out. Uh, this is the fuel injected car um, today for a quick trip before John collects it, probably later this month, we think. Um, so that's been out, so that's nice. Um, yeah, the P1800, that engine is still with Scholar doing the machining before it returns to me for me to build the engine. Um, and, and let me just cut to an earlier video now uh, that we recorded at the beginning of the week. Here you go, I'll be back in a moment. Just back from the North Yorkshire now uh, that we were competing in Garris car, got a respectable result beat my seeding at long last. That hasn't happened in a year. Um, so we were seeded 14th, which I thought was a bit optimistic uh, given my recent performance, but we came in 12th um, and actually technically 7th overall on regularities, which is of course the navigators, um, uh, the, the judge of the navigator, we came 7th overall um, on regularity. Uh, Gareth had been ill all week and um, um, and was struggling a bit on the tests. Uh, poor chap, uh, you know, still sounded pretty awful uh, during the weekend, but struggled manfully on and um, managed to, uh, we managed to get away with only one cone fault uh, and no wrong tests, so that was good. Um, as for me, yeah, as a navigation side, just about in control. Um, it, it was a bit, marginal sometimes we reversed twice uh one was uh, both of them were complete well no one was completely stupid on the navigator's part uh we'd just come out of a control i would thought okay round about second exit as we crossed the main trunk road and um got my look down to go and check out what my time was into the previous control and calculate that out and next thing i knew we were just about to head onto the main trunk road which of course is another 10 or 15 miles to get round back again um just yeah you know, i i knew we were coming up to a trunk road that was always a potential but the roundabout looked like it was second exit gareth took second exit uh, and it was wrong uh, it should have been third exit i guess um, so that was just stupid, but we recovered from that. Gareth reversed the um, 20 meters up the slip road and, and got back on. Um, the second one was the last regularity, which was a devilish demon. It was fabulous regularity, huge plot and bash to begin with. And then at the mid control, another sheet for plot and bash to take you on for the latter half or for the last section of competitive on the entire event. Um, so fairly stressful. But he had nice lengths of um, no junction of about sort of five kilometers without a junction, which meant you could get on and plot ahead. Uh, and on that one, I had I'd all got it all plotted and was then concentrating on getting my timings back right again. Um, when we I just caught out of the corner of my eye a white just down to my left and a code board. And sure enough, I'd forgotten, well, I hadn't looked at the map for a while and the labeled not as map white that we were supposed to fork left and then turn right and back onto the road, I'd completely forgotten about. Um, so again, we had to reverse back probably 100 meters up the road to slot left and pick up the code board. But again, we recovered from that um, to come in on our control at, less than 10 seconds adrift so that, that was kind of fine um, so back to work now and we have an, a sort of host of gearboxes i've been presented with and it's the uh, d-type m41 that i'm supposed to be rebuilding before it goes into a gentleman's 220 and i'm struggling um, when we come into gearboxes that have been treated before us, it's often a case that the grub screws that secure the selectors, so these grub screws that secure the selectors, there's a very quick giveaway. And if you see it like ovaled out, like these are, you can pretty much guess that they've been over torqued. And sure enough, they are. And I'm, 
I've got this one out just these two I've failed at so far this one I think the reverse one will come out that doesn't look overly damaged I think we can probably get that one out um, and um, yeah it's going to be a struggle I suspect that's going to take me two hours and I might end up having to cut this shaft entirely uh, to get that out and hopefully we'll succeed with the reverse shaft uh, so not nice um, over torquing it's often a problem with gearboxes um, over tightening grub screws it's about the only problem you can ever get when rebuilding a gearbox and of course until you can get the grub screws out you can't touch the gearbox uh, nothing else is coming apart so that's my problem this morning um, I estimate probably potentially two hours trying to get these out and hopefully non-destructively but I might have to destroy certainly that shaft and possibly this shaft then that one will come out the, the um, uh, that third fourth shaft will come out very easily so there we go that's what I'm up to um, talk to you later in the week one hour later and the gearbox is apart thankfully um, we eventually with a load of heat got four of the grub, grub screws out but the inhibit switch wasn't going anywhere. It was so mangled. Um, and actually it turned out the thread was mashed as well. Uh, so we had to cut it from top and bottom to then separate that out. Grub screw comes out, shaft comes out. So that is the inhibit switch there. Um, certain amount of water in the gearbox as well, um, but probably fairly recent, I suspect. I suspect it was possibly steam cleaned um, before, uh, before it was handed over to us. So I think that's recent because there's no evidence on the lay shaft gears of any standing water there. So I'm pretty happy with that. We just got to clean everything pretty thoroughly. Um, there we go, so um, we're good to go on this gearbox now. It's straightforward from this point, a straightforward rebuild, except for the fact that we have to replace all the grub screws because uh, they're so mangled. Um, that's it, good. Okay, so, yep, uh, and here it is, all built up. Uh, it was a bit of a wee tinker, actually, I have to say. The uh, the, the final thing that cost me a good hour was that the, let me go and fetch it. Okay, so I got the lay gear inserted in there, um, assembled the shafts, inverted it, popped out the dummy shaft and popped in this shaft, which then promptly dropped all the needle bearings out of the lay shaft. And the reason is, that somebody at some point had inserted this wrong way around. And the giveaway is, if you can see that, can you see the needle marks on this? This is the fat end, i.e. the back end of the lay shaft. And clearly it has been forced past the rollers, hence all these roller marks here. Uh, so what had happened is I'm guessing at some point somebody had put it in the wrong way around um, and that required them to use a great deal of force which has actually slightly pained out this end of the shaft and indeed there is actually a couple of roller bearing marks on this as well. So of course when I inserted this the correct way round, because this end is slightly mushroomed, it then attacked my roller bearings and meant that they were forced out and dropped out. So twice I had to strip it down again, twice rebuild it before I worked out what was going on and that I needed to put in a brand new lay shaft despite the fact that they're actually the actual roller bearing surfaces are perfectly good so bit of hard work that one um uh but we're done we're there now so that's it uh not sure there's anything else to say really that's it for the week have a good weekend